Welcome, grade 11 students, under the STEM curriculum of Zamboanga del Norte National High School. So this is our first pre-recorded lecture for General Biology 1, Module 1. We are going to tackle two lessons in this pre-recorded lecture. First, we have the cell theory, and second, we have the cell structures and functions. So let us have a short recollection back on junior high school. So as we all know, biology came from the Greek words bios means life and logos means study. So if we're going to combine both of these words, biology means the study of life. When we refer to the word life, it is very broad. Life has several aspects. So which is which? So to be specific with the definition of biology, the field of biology is defined as the study of organisms and their interactions with one another and their environment. The field of biology deals with three main things based from this definition. First, biology deals with the study of organisms. So I want to emphasize on the word organism, I'm referring to living organisms. Second, the field of biology deals with the interaction of organism to another organism. And third, the field of biology deals with the study of organisms and their interaction with their environments. So let us have a short review on the different levels of biological organization. So I know you are familiar with this one since this is taught back in junior high school. So we all know that everything that has mass and occupies space is called matter. And we also know that the basic unit of matter are atoms. So when atoms bond together, they form molecules or macromolecules. Macromolecules are just molecules that are bigger in size. When specific molecules or macromolecules combine together, they form cells. So cells, as you all know, there are several types. So when cells of the same kind or of the same type group together, they form tissues. So tissues are a group of cells of the same kind that perform specific function. And when these tissues, they group together, they form organs. So as we all know, organs, there are different organs in an organism's body, and they perform also a specific function. And when these organs, they group together, they form organ systems. And when these organ systems, they group together, they make up an organism. So take note that an organism can be also called as an individual. Organism or individual. When several organisms or several individuals of the same kind, we call them species, they group together in a particular area, we call that population. And then several populations group together in a particular area, we call that a community. And then several communities in a particular area group together, we call that an ecosystem. And then several ecosystems will make up the biosphere. So this subject, general biology, will be divided into two semesters. So for this semester, we have general biology 1. And for the second semester, we have general biology 2. So for general biology 1, we will be focusing more on the cells and also of the tissues. So for general biology 2, we will climb up to much more complex levels of the biological organization. So these are the things that I have mentioned earlier. So let us proceed to lesson 1, the cell theory. So the cell theory is one of the main principles in the field of biology. The cell theory explains the nature of the cell. The cell theory is composed of three statements, or also known as postulates. So these are the three postulates of the cell theory. We have postulate number one. 
All living things are composed of cells, or it can also be stated as all living things are composed of one or more cells. So all living organisms inhabiting this planet are very diverse. We have those organisms that are made up of two or more cells with several types. They are called multicellular organisms. So the most obvious example are us, the human species, and you can also include those organisms that you can see directly with your eyes, such as your pets or the plants surrounding your house. But there are also living organisms that we cannot see directly with our eyes. So for example, bacterium, or in plural form bacteria, we cannot see them directly with our eyes, right? So these organisms, they are only made up of one cell. And this type of organisms, they are called unicellular organisms. The second postulate of the cell theory states that the cell is the basic unit of life. So why is it the basic unit of life? So we will know later in lesson 2. The third postulate of the cell theory states that all cells come from pre-existing cells. So cells, they don't appear from out of nowhere. Cells come from previous cell. So an individual cell replicates or divides itself into two, as what you can witness here on the animated picture. So from one cell, it divides into two to produce two new cells, or you can also call that as two new daughter cells. So to state back the three postulates of the cell theory, number one, all living things are composed of one or more cells. Number two, the cell is the basic unit of life. And number three, all cells come from pre-existing cells. So now the question is, how did people or the scientists behind the formulation of the cell theory knew that these statements describes the nature of the cell? So, it all started with the discovery of the cells. So let us go back in history and know how the cell theory came to be. So it all started in 1595, or other references would say 1590s. So there were glassmakers named Zacharias Janssen, and together with his father, they invented the first compound microscope. But the credit for who invented the first compound microscope goes to Zacharias Janssen and not his father. Why? His father made this microscope, but Zacharias Janssen perfected the design, the production. So let us have a short review about microscopes. So a microscope is an instrument used for viewing very small objects. So the microscope, it is composed of various glass lenses. So na atay lens dere, we have here, 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 and also here. Those glass lenses would help to enlarge or magnify the image of the actual object. So if you are going to observe this slide, we call this a slide. This is allium sepa or also known as onion or sibuyas. So as you can see, murara siya og tuldok. But this one, this is an this is a tissue. Tissue coming from the tip sa yang root sa ugat. Okay? So if you're going to view that under the microscope, you will see the cells of the allium sepa very clearly. So daghan kaayo siyang cells. So going back, the invention of the microscope paved way to the discovery of the cells. So before this microscope was invented, or before 1590s, people, particularly in the scientific community, they don't have any idea that cells exist. So thankful for the invention of the microscope. So going back to Janssen's microscope, it is specifically called as compound microscope. Why compound? Because it is made up of 
two lenses. So we have a glass lens here and we also have glass lens here. So this is a hollow tube in which both ends have glass lenses. So if a microscope is only made up of a single lens, you cannot call that a compound microscope. You can call that a single lens microscope. So we will see later on a design of a single lens microscope. So let us proceed. In 1665, Robert Hooke used an early compound microscope of his own design. So similar to Zacharias Janssen nga microscope, they are both compound microscope, but ang iya is lahi yang design. This is his design sa iya ang microscope. So he used this microscope to look at thin slices of cork tissue. If you are not familiar with cork, makita ni mo na siya sa wine or champagne bottles, ang taklob ana, di ba? Okay? So, he sliced these cork tissues and viewed these cork tissues under his own microscope. So, this is what he saw under the microscope. So, if you look closely, so cork tissue, it is made up of like tiny empty boxes. So, he compared these tiny empty boxes like of that the tiny rooms of a monastery. So, tiba, a monastery is an institution or a place where priests or monks practice their calling to serve God. So, these tiny empty boxes, he called them cells. So, why cells? It is derived from the Latin word cellula meaning small compartments because they look like small compartments. Thus, Robert Hooke was the first to discover the cells. But specifically, Robert Hooke observed dead cells. He was the first one to discover dead cells. Nga nung dead cells ang cork cells. Cork cells are non-living na na nga tissues. Here, you can see why they look like tiny empty boxes because ang nabilin na lang ana niya is the cell wall. This is the cell wall. And inside, wala na na siya eh, mga cell parts or structures. Ang nabilin na lang niya is cell wall. Thus, Robert Hooke was the first to discover the cells. But to be, spe to, but to be specific, Robert Hooke was the first to discover dead cells. Now, in 1674, Anton van Leeuwenhoek, so we pronounce W as V, so Anton van Leeuwenhoek. So Leeuwenhoek, he made his own microscope. So young microscope is a single lens microscope because it only contains one glass lens. So naadiri ang, if you can see that hole there, naadira ang glass lens a young microscope okay so Anton van Leeuwenhoek is a very curious person like since naaman siya ay microscope niya ay yang gibuhat so he would love to collect samples or specimen from almost everywhere like everywhere like including pond water and also including his mouth so malingaw siya ba so he will observe uh, he will observe his specimen using his microscope. So how to use this microscope is like this. So we're going to zoom in during a part. Okay. So you can see the hole here na adiri ang glass lens. And as you can see here, tiba pointed siya. So at the tip of that point, diha niya a patong ang iya ang specimen. So maybe just a single drop of water if he used water as a sample and then on the other side of this glass lens did to niya a view so he views his specimen like this okay so sa pika side from his observations or what he observed under his microscope he was able to witness various tiny living things which he termed as animalcules so why is it animalcules 
So this is what he have we what he had observed under the microscope since wala pa may camera sa una sa iya ang time so gina drawing ra nila or gina sketch ra nila ang ila ang maobserve under the microscope so he called it animal cues because these things that he observed under the microscope are motile when we say motile they are moving thus living hook stated that motility is a quality of life. So that is why he called these things as animal cues. And the other reason why he called them animal, cue, animal cues is that they look like tiny little animals. But in present times, these animal cues, they are unicellular organisms. So as what I have mentioned earlier, Unicellular organisms are those organisms that are only made up of one cell. So example would be bacteria and protozoa. Because of his observations of microorganisms using his microscope, so he was known as the father of microbiology. So microbiology is a field in biology that studies microorganisms now let us go fast forward to the 19th century so in 1831 robert brown if you are familiar with the concept of brownian motion in which uh, particles move randomly in liquid or fluid so the man behind that concept is robert brown so Robert Brown was observing orchid leaf tissues under the microscope. Then he observed that in the cells there is this prominent central structure. And now this prominent central structure is now called the nucleus. And also during around the same time, Matthias Schleiden is a botanist. So when we say botanists, these are person that studies the field of botany. So botany is a field of biology that studies or specializes in plants. So Matthias Schleiden was observing various plant tissues from different plant species. One thing in common from his observations under the microscope is that these plant cells look similar or they are alike so he concluded that plants are made of cells but also around in the same time but located in another place we have theodore schwann he is a zoologist so he is specializing in the field of zoology or zoology is the study of it is a field of biology specializes or deals with animals. So, I hear up with Zagibuhat ni Schleiden, Schwann observed various animal tissues. And also, Schwann also came to the same conclusion that these animal tissues are similar or alike in structures. So, this is his sketches or drawings from his observations. Okay? So, Theodore Schwann concluded that animals are made up of cells. So, fast forward to 1855. So, a physician and pathologist named Rudolf Virchow, but some would pronounce this as Rudolf Virchow. So, Virchow is a physician, so he is a doctor, and he is also a pathologist. So, pathology is study of diseases of how diseases work okay so how did Rudolf Virchow contributed to the cell theory so Virchow concluded or theorized that as animals are unable to are unable to arise without previously existing animals cells are also unable to arise without previously existing cells in uh, to support his claim so he was also observing various cells, I guess, from his 
patients because he is a doctor. So as you can see, let us observe this one. As you can see, these are cells that are dividing here. So he concluded or he theorized that cells arise from previously existing cells. So cells does not appear out of nowhere. Okay? So always remember that cells and individual cells would divide or replicate to produce new cells or produce daughter cells. To sum up, the discoveries made by Robert Hooke, Anton van Leeuwenhoek, Matthias Schleiden, Theodore Schwann, and Rudolf Virchow, and other people led to the formation of the cell theory. So without their discoveries, and also without the invention of the microscope, we would never came to the understanding of the nature of the cell. So to state back the different statements or postulates of the cell theory, number one, we have all living things are composed of one or more cells. Number two, the cell is the basic unit of life. And number three, all cells come from pre-existing cells. So now let us proceed to lesson two. We have the cell structures and function. Going back to the second postulate of the cell theory, which states that the cell is the basic unit of life. So why is the cell the basic unit of life? That is because despite the size of the cell, the cell is composed of different parts and structures. So these different parts or structures of the cell have corresponding functions. So just think of the cell just like an organism's body. So diba, an organism's body has several organs and these organs has specific functions in order for the organism to survive. So parihara po siya sa ato ang cells. Our cells have different parts and structures with corresponding functions despite its size. To give you an analogy of the cell, so think of the cell as a factory. Okay, so as we all know, a factory has several departments or stations that has specific task or function. Okay, so let us say this factory makes fudgy bar. Okay, so as you can see here, we have doors here, or let us say these are entrances or exits. So our raw materials for our fudgy bar, let us say the flours, the eggs, the milk, sugar, will enter through this door. And then just imagine that this factory has a great space, so it needs people to transport these raw materials. Okay? So you can also see this station here in which this is the co cooking equipment, so it has to be prepared. And those raw materials that I have mentioned earlier will be transported here to be mixed or to be cooked. Okay? Then after doing so, we already have our, let us say this is our fudgy bar, but this is not yet prepared to be delivered outside of the factory to the distributors or the wholesalers, the retailers, so it has to be transported to the station or department in which they resha a package then after packaging those fudgy bar it can now be transported outside of the cell through this door so it can now be readily delivered to different distributors or wholesalers okay then also as you can see here on the central part this is the control center of the factory so this is where the equipment machines are controlled or operated then we also have the planning section of the factory okay as you can see the factory has several functions several different functions but all of these functions are coordinated together to attain or to finish a certain 
goal or task that is to produce the fudgy bar. So a cell just like a factory has different parts or structures that has specific functions and these functions are coordinated together in order to obtain or to attain a certain goal which is to ensure the survival of the cell. So without these functions, the cell will die and the organism as a whole will die too. Now let us proceed. There are two main types of cells. We have prokaryotic cell and eukaryotic cell. But for the sake of this lesson, we will focus on eukaryotic cell. We will tackle about prokaryotic cell and compare it to eukaryotic cell in the next module. So, a eukaryotic cell has two major classifications. So, I know na my idea about that in junior high school. So, we have animal cell and the plant cell. So, this is an animal cell. We also have another illustration of the animal cell with labeled parts. Then, this is our plant cell. And we also have this illustration of the plant cell with labeled parts. Okay, so the eukaryotic cells are made up of structures called organelles. So why is it called organelles? Because the cell is so tiny, so its parts or structures is also like tiny organs. So that's why it is called organelles. And also looking closely, so both illustration of the animal cell and the plant cell, both animal cell and plant cell have similarities and differences in their cell organelles or structures. So later on in this lesson, we will get to know each of the cell organelles or structures or components and also their corresponding function. And also we will get to know what type of eukaryotic cell does this specific organelles are located. It can be located in both animal or plant cell or it can be located only in plant cell or it can only be located in animal cell. So we will get to know that later. Now let us proceed to the first component or structure of the cell. We have the cell membrane or also known as the plasma membrane. So where shall specifically here this one? Look at my pointer. Okay, that is our cell membrane. So the cell membrane or plasma membrane are found in animal and plant cells. So if you look closely, the structure of the cell membrane, this is what it looks like here and also this one. Okay, the composition of the cell membrane is made up of two layers of what we call lipid membrane. This is a lipid membrane, lipid membrane. There are two layers of it, that's why the structure of the cell membrane is called the lipid bilayer. Okay? There is a topic on succeeding modules that is dedicated for cell membrane. So we will focus deeper on the cell membrane on succeeding topics or modules. So what does the cell membrane do? So the cell membrane serves as a boundary. A boundary to what? A boundary between the internal environment of the cell. So this is the internal environment of the cell or the environment contained by the cell membrane. And then the environment outside of the cell membrane is what we call the external environment of the cell. So importante kayo ang presence of cell membrane because without the cell membrane, the internal environment of the cell and the external environment of the cell will get mixed up, okay? And as I have mentioned earlier that the cell membrane serves as a boundary, not only that, the cell membrane regulates the passage of materia materials in and out of the cell. When we say regulate, it means to control. So the cell membrane, di na siya basta-basta magpasulod, magpagawas, o mga materials. Okay? So we will get to know more about that when we go to the module or succeeding topics about cell membrane and transport mechanisms. Okay? 
So for this lesson, I will only introduce that the cell membrane, the structure of the cell membrane, is composed of two layers of lipid membrane or also known as the lipid bilayer. And since this is some sort of boundary, the cell membrane, so it separates the internal environment of the cell and the external environment of the cell. And the cell membrane regulates or controls the passage of materials inside or outside of the cell. Next component of the cell, we have the cytoplasm. So cytoplasm is found in both animal and plant cells. So cytoplasm, that is the entire space or region inside the cell. To visualize that, look at this picture of the cell. So remove all these cellular parts, okay? So, mabilin na lang din ana is space. And we have the cell membrane. So, the space contained inside the cell membrane, that is what we call the cytoplasm. And the entire space within the cell is filled with fluid called cytosol. Okay, so now what is the function of the cytoplasm? We have it holds organelles in place and other cell structures. So, diha ato ang mga cell components or structures or organelles are suspended or held. Okay? And not only that, the space inside the cell or the cytoplasm is the site for chemical reactions. Okay? Inside the cell, daghan kayo ni siya chemical reactions may tabo. And we can only get to know some of them in the succeeding quarter, okay? In the next quarter, we will talk about photosynthesis and cellular respiration. So, we will get to know some chemical reactions that will happen in the cytoplasm, okay? Next, we have the ribosomes. So, ribosomes are both found in animal and plant cells. So, if nakita ninyo sa mga illustrations sa plant cell and animal cell, those tiny dots scattered sa cytoplasm sa cell or mga dots nga naka-attach sa folded membrane of the endoplasmic reticulum, those are ribosomes. Okay? So, they are found scattered in the cytoplasm or they are also known as free ribosomes because they are free, of course. And those attach in the endoplasmic reticulum or they are called attached ribosomes if we look closely the structures are ribosomes it is made up of components which we call subunits so this is a ribosomal subunit or ribosome subunit okay so what does ribosomes do or what is ang ilang function they make or synthesize proteins Okay, so what are proteins? So let us have a review about the four main types or four main classes of biological macromolecules. So what are biological macromolecules? So these are the macromolecules that make up an organism's body. So the biological macromolecules that make up an organism's body is classified into four main Types or classes, we have carbohydrates, proteins, lipids, and nucleic acid. So last school year, I was able to give a lecture worth two meetings about biological macromolecules. But this school year, since the topics were uh, minimized or gilesen nila, so you, uh, you will get to know more about biological ma macromolecules when you go to grade 12, when you have your general chemistry. But, for the sake of my subject, we will get to mahinay-hinaya na to discuss ning uban nga mga biological macromolecules. Okay? So, we have carbohydrates, proteins, lipids, and nucleic acid. So, do not forget these four main types of biological macromolecules. Okay? So, the biological macromolecules that is most, uh, what I mean is, the biological macromolecule nga mas pinakataas o composition 
in an organism's body are proteins like 50% of the cell is composed of proteins and the other 50% kay combination na din siya sa carbohydrates, lipids, and nucleic acids. Now, let us proceed to the organelle called nucleus. Nucleus singular form while ang plural form is nuclei. Okay? The organelle nucleus are found in animal and plant cell. So, the nucleus, this is the most prominent structure in eukaryotic cell. Why prominent? That is because when you view cells under the microscope, so mauni siya ang organelle or structure nga una dyan ni mong makita. Actually, when you use mga compound microscope, katabit ang usually nga naa sa school, ang organelle structure na dyan ngayon mo ang maklaro is ang nucleus. The other parts, the other organelles or other cell structures, dili na na ni mo siya maklaro. Okay? You will need to use a more um, high-tech nga microscope if you want to view other cell structures or organelles such as um, an electron microscope. Maklaro gin ninyo ang uban nga mga cell organelles or structures. Okay? So, the nucleus, this is the structure of the nucleus. We have na na siya yung membrane na kasurround sa iya. Ah. We call that the nuclear membrane or you can also call that as the nuclear envelope and as you can see sa nuclear envelope na siya yung mga mga holes mga buho buho we call that the nuclear pore okay we will get to know later on say function sa nuclear pore okay the nucleus it contains the genetic material so the genetic material as we all know is the dna DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. So, ayaw dyan nakalimti kung unsa ang abbreviation sa DNA. DNA is deoxyribonucleic acid. So, DNA or our genetic material or the genetic material na adiha nakakontain tanang information about the organism. Okay? And also, the DNA serves as a manual or nadia ang information or instructions about the various cell activities. So, grabe kayo ang genetic material or ang DNA. So, if you can see in various illustrations sa animal or plant cell, wala kayo makita dito nga label nga DNA but na kayo makita nga label called chromatin or chromosomes. Well, those are mga structure sa DNA. So, we'll get to know more about the chromatin, chromosomes, and the DNA when we go to succeeding modules. Um, the topic would be cell cycle and meiosis and mitosis. Okay. So, what does the nucleus do or what is the function of the nucleus? So, it controls the cell's activities. So, silbi ang nucleus is the brain of the cell. So, how does it control the cell's activities? That is because of the genetic material. Because as what I have mentioned earlier, the genetic material or DNA contains the instructions of the cell's activities. And also, the nucleus is the site for synthesizing. When we say the word synthesizing, it also means to make. So, to make or synthesize ribosomes. But, as you can see, we have a central structure here sa itong nucleus. We call that the nucleolus. Okay? So, specifically sa nucleolus, di ha nakakontain po ang genetic material. So, ang genetic material na ito na apod diri sa here, diri nga space sa itong nucleus. And we also have here sa nucleolus. And the ribosomes, the parts of the ribosomes, as what I have mentioned earlier, the, riboso the ribosomal subunits are made in the nucleolus. Then after the ribosomal subunits are made, it can go outside of the nucleus through the nuclear, nuclear pore. Next, we have the organelle called mitochondria. Or singular form, if you only refer to single organelle, we have the 
mitochondrion. Kung daghan, mitochondria. So, mitochondria are found both in animal and plant cell. So, to describe its structure, the mitochondria is rod-shaped, but some would say sausage shape or masyag pa oblong, elongated. Elongated siya nga structure. And it is a double membrane-bound organelle. So, unsa yung meaning sa double membrane-bound organelle? So, it has two membranes. We have here, kita mo ng orange nga part. That is the outer membrane. And then, we have here the yellow part. Nga folded siya. We call that the inner membrane of the mitochondria. That is why mitochondria is a double membrane-bound organelle. Okay, so what does the mitochondria do? So it is known as the powerhouse of the cell. So why is it mitochondria is called the powerhouse of the cell? That is because the mitochondria makes and stores energy in the form of ATP. So to give you an analogy, ang sakyanan or ang car, dili siya mudagan if wala siya'y fuel. So, for the cell, the various cell activities or cell functions could not operate if walay energy. And that energy is in the form of ATP and the organelle responsible for making that one is the mitochondria. So, we will get to know more about the mitochondria and also of ATP or adenosine triphosphate in second quarter when we talk about cellular respiration. Next, we have the peroxisomes. So, peroxisomes are found both in animal and plant cells. So, peroxisomes are, comp uh, these are round organelles made up of the lipid bilayer. So, pareha siya o composition sa cell membrane. And then, it has enzymes here in the form of this crystalloid core, crystalloid core. So what does it do? So these enzymes would help in oxidation reactions that would break down fatty acids and amino acids. And also peroxisomes, they detoxify many poisons that enter the body. So for example, when you drink alcoholic beverages, so high amounts of alcohol in your body is dangerous so your body will will convert those alcohol into another substance nga ma-release siya pag pangihi. When you drink alcoholic beverages, if palainom mo, so sigira mo og pangihi. Next, we have the centrosomes. So, centrosomes, they are found in animal cells. Wala siya sa plant cells. So, centrosomes, they are composed of pair of small cylindrical structures called centrioles. So, this is centrioles. So, a pair of centrioles compose, composes the centrosome. So, what does centrosomes do? So, centrosomes are only active during cell division. Okay? So, what does the cent uh, centrosome do? So, it will release long stiff fibers as you can see here so this is our centrosome mo extend og mga long stiff fibers and these long stiff fibers will anchor or connect themselves to the chromosomes okay so we'll get get to know more about this one when we go to the mitosis and meiosis so dito na siya sa, sa dito na, na siya sa succeeding lectures Next, we have the lysosomes. So, lysosomes are found in animal cells. So, in plant cells, well, uh, not all plants have lysosomes. Only a few plants have lysosomes. So, lysosomes, there are spherical sacs that contain digestive enzymes. So, let us define first what are digestive enzymes. So, ganiha sa peroxisomes, I have mentioned enzymes that peroxisome have enzymes but i forgot to mention what are enzymes so enzymes they are proteins so enzymes what they do is that they make chemical reactions faster or they are also known as catalyst of chemical reaction 
Okay, to give you an example is that pag mukaon mo sky flakes, let us say sky flakes, pag butang ninyo na mismo sa inyo ang ba ba or sa inyo mouse, tiba diritso ah uh, diritso mo homok ang biscuit or ang sky flakes. Why is that? That is because your saliva has enzymes. Uh, the enzymes present in your saliva is called amylase. So, enzymes, what they do is that they fasten or they speed up chemical reaction mo ng tingala kang ang biscuit is humok na dayon. Because if walay enzymes sa imo ang laway, then katong biscuit, ibutang niyo sa imong baba, dugay pa kayo ta siya, dugay pa kayo to siya mo humok. Okay? There are a lot of enzymes, different enzymes with specific function. But if we're going to be specific about digestive enzymes, so let us define first what is digestive. So digestive means to break down, to break down a larger particle or molecule into much smaller niya nga size. So digestive enzymes, these are enzymes that fastens up or speeds up the reaction of breaking down larger molecules into smaller molecules. So, lysosomes have digestive enzymes inside sa yang sac. So, these enzymes, they break down macromolecules. Diba? As what I have mentioned earlier, macromolecules are molecules that are uh, larger in size. So, when you're going to break down mo uh, macromolecules, you are turning them into a much smaller nga component. Okay? And another function of lysosomes is that they destroy pathogens. So, what are pathogens? So, pathogens, these are mga, mga organisms or foreign bodies that could cause disease. Kung di siya makakause of disease, they are called non-pathogenic. So, lysosomes destroy pathogens and also other foreign bodies that enters the cell. So, this is how lysosomes work. For example, there is a, an incoming uh, macromolecule. Let us say this is a carbohydrate. It will go here sa cell membrane. So, ang cell membrane, it will, it will fold itself inward until malukop niya ang atong food or atong carbohydrate. And then, we have here nakatang atong lysosomes. As you can see, there's this green nga mga bits. Those are the digestive enzymes. So, the lysosome will fuse with the, what we call the vesicle containing the food. So, macromolecule man siya. Once ang lysosome mo fuse na sa ato ang vesicle, so this one will be digested or it will be broken down into much, sm much more smaller nga components. So, may nani na dayon siya. Or, lysosomes could also break down excess or worn out cell parts. So, there, if there are mga organelles or cell parts nga dili na siya mo function, so, what lysosomes do is that they break down the organelle. For example, this is a worn out nga mitochondria or no longer functioning na siya so, nga mitochondria. So, the lysosomes will fuse with this mitochondria and break the mitochondria into smaller components. So, that smaller components kay PD pa siya ma-recycle to make another cell structure. Next, we have the cell wall. So, this is one of the distinction of plant cells from animal cells. So, cell wall are only found in plant cells. So, the cell wall surrounds the as you can see here, the cell membrane. So, after the cell membrane, napatay na surround nga cell wall. So, a cell wall is a rigid layer. When we say rigid, it means stiff or gahe. So, it surrounds the cell membrane of plant cells. So, cell wall ang iyang function that is to protect the cell. Since gahe man siya nga layer, it is a rigid layer. And also, I want, to uh, I want you to take note that cell wall Kani siyang a part, the cell wall, that is a non-living nga part sa cell. 
So, that is why katong gimension ako ganiya sa cell theory kang Robert Hooke. When Robert Hooke discovered dead cells, ang nabili na lang ato is ang cell wall because cell wall is not a living nga part sa cell. So, since the cell wall is a rigid layer or a stiff layer, it protects the cell, it provides structural, structural support, and gives shape to the cell. So, the cell wall is the reason why ang mga plant organisms makita ni mo are stationary or they do not move because of this rigid layer or stiff layer. The next organelle is the chloroplast. So, chloroplasts are only found in plant cells. So, chloroplast is a double membrane organelle. So, pariha po siya sa mitochondria, a double membrane. So, na siya outer membrane, kaning dark green part, and it also has an inner membrane. And aside from that, the chloroplast have structures called thylakoids. So, mura siya mga pancakes or coins stuck into piles, okay? So, the chloroplast, ang iyong function, this is the organelle where photosynthesis takes place. So, tiba, you have known about photosynthesis in junior high school. So, photo means light and synthesis means to make. So, photosynthesis is a process that converts light energy or the sunlight into chemical energy in the form of food specifically in the form of carbohydrates so we will get back to the organelle chloroplast and also the entire process of photosynthesis in quarter two or the second quarter of this semester so aside from that uh, the chloroplast contains this pigment called chlorophyll. So chlorophyll is responsible for capturing light energy or capturing sunlight. So um, for this lesson, just take note that chloroplast is the site or the organelle where photosynthesis takes place. So we will go on thoroughly, thoroughly about chloroplast and the entire process of photosynthesis in the second quarter. Next, we have vesicles. Or we also have vacuoles. So vesicles and vacuoles, they are found in animal and plant cells. So vesicles and vacuoles, this, these are membrane enclosed sacs and they function for storage and transport of materials. So for analogy, vesicles and vacuoles would be like a storage room or bodiga. Or for transport, if the vesicle acts for or functions for transport. So, mura siyog mga delivery vehicle, no? For example, mga food delivery. Nga na na. So, the component of the vesicles or vacuoles, it is composed of a lipid bilayer. So, pariha po siya o composition sa peroxisomes and the cell membrane. Okay? So, I want you to take note that vesicles and vacuoles are different, okay? So, what are the difference between vesicles and vacuoles? So, vesicles, they are smaller in size. It can fuse with the cell membrane or plasma membrane and also with other organelles like Golgi apparatus and the plasmic reticulum, okay? So, function of vesicles are storage and transport of materials. While for vacuoles, they are much larger in size compared to vesicles and they do not fuse with the membranes just like of just like sa mga vesicles. So, um, vesicles ganiha diba is they can fuse with membranes like the cell membrane and this membrane system ng mga organelles Golgi apparatus and endoplasmic reticulum. So, ang vacuole do not fuse with this membrane. So, yang function is for storage only. So, we have an example of a vacuole. 
we have the central vacuole. So central vacuole is found in plant cells. So the central vacuole is the largest organelle in plant cells. So the size of the central vacuole is almost the entire space of the plant cell. So the central vacuole, it is filled with the fluid called cell sap. So what is the function of the central vacuole? It functions for storage of fluids, substances, and other materials. And also, that is also the site for breaking down waste products and macromolecules. And also, um, the central vacuole applies pressure to the cell wall, causing the plant to stand upright. Okay, to make sense of this one, so let us look at this next illustration. Okay, so when the cell vacuole is filled, so ang pressure ana niya mo apply outwards, so the cell wall would be rigid. Okay, look at here. So a full vacuole provides a rigid structure to the plant, so your plant will stand upright. So if the cell vacuole or the central vacuole contains less volume of fluid, so may tabo, it could not apply enough pressure to make the plant rigid. So, maonang ang imong plant is layus. Okay? Next, we have the endoplasmic reticulum or abbreviation niya ER. But, I discourage you to write ER. Kompleto ha dyan siya. Endoplasmic reticulum. So, endoplasmic reticulum are found both in animal and plant cells. So, endoplasmic reticulum, these are mga structures with folded siyang arrangement. Okay? So, these structures found near the nucleus and are made up of flattened sacs called cisternae. So, kani mga flattened sacs or folded sacs, we call them cisternae. And the endoplasmic reticulum is found next to the nucleus. As you can see here, this is our endoplasmic reticulum. Our endoplasmic reticulum has two types. We have rough endoplasmic reticulum and the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. So, what are the distinction between the two? Okay? So, for rough endoplasmic reticulum, na ana siya yung mga naka-attach nga ribosomes. So, ang ribosomes, ang reason nga no, ang this type of endoplasmic reticulum is considered as rough. So, ang ribosomes ang nakaparough sa iya ang surface. So, ang function sa rough endoplasmic reticulum is to transport proteins made in the ribosomes. So, tiba, I have mentioned earlier the function of the ribosomes. The ribosomes synthesizes or makes protein. So, after the ribosomes made or synthesized proteins, so the rough ER will transport it to another place. So, we will get to know later asa mapadulong ang proteins nga gi produce sa ribosomes. Then next, we have the smooth ER or smooth endoplasmic reticulum. So, this is the smooth endoplasmic reticulum just next to the rough endoplasmic reticulum. So, it is called smooth endoplasmic reticulum because wala siya mga ribosomes naka-attach sa iyang surface. So, ang function ni smooth endoplasmic reticulum is different from the rough endoplasmic reticulum. So, ang function ni smooth endoplasmic reticulum is to make lipids. So, remember that the rough ER, it has ribosomes attached to the surface and then that is where the proteins are made, specifically sa ribosomes. And then sa smooth endoplasmic reticulum, walay mga ribosomes na attach and it produces lipids. Okay? Next, let us go to another organelle. We have the Golgi apparatus or Golgi complex. So, Golgi apparatus is found in both animal and plant cells. So, the structure of the Golgi apparatus is composed of flattened membrane sac. So, parparia siya o itsura sa structures ato ang endoplasmic reticulum. 
So, ang function ni Golgi Apparatus is responsible for sorting, tagging, packaging, and distribution of lipids and proteins coming from the endoplasmic reticulum. So, in other words, katung proteins and lipids nga produce sa endoplasmic reticulum, dili pa to siya read readily available for usage no so kailangan pa siya i, i modify kailangan pa siya i package diri sa Golgi apparatus so katong lipids and proteins ikan sa endoplasmic reticulum will be transported padlolong sa Golgi apparatus so after ma modify ma package ang lipids and proteins diri sa Golgi apparatus ready na dayon siya i distribute sa other parts of the cell or outside of the cell and also i want you to take note when you write the name of this organelle golgi apparatus make sure that the letter g should always be capital kay nga no, this organelle is named after the person who discovered this one we have camilo golgi so always yun na nga capital g not small letter g and also para dili mo malibog between the golgi apparatus and endoplasmic reticulum since pariha man sila og structure so just remember that endoplasmic reticulum is found next to the nucleus while the Golgi apparatus is found far from the nucleus. So, more na distinction nilang duha when it comes to identifying the structures of the Golgi apparatus and endoplasmic reticulum. Next, we have the cellular component called cytoskeleton. So, cytoskeleton is found in both animal and plant cells. So, the structure of cytoskeleton is made up of network of protein fibers within the cytoplasm. So, atang cytoplasm, dili rin siya space filled with fluid. So, it has protein fibers. So, ang function sa cytoskeleton is that it maintains cell shape. Um, to give you an analogy, no? So, the, the cytoskeleton is just like the skeletal system of humans and other organisms. So, if you imagine if we don't have bones in our body, so of course, we don't have our own definite shape or structure. And also, we will be lying on the ground like a gelatin mass because we cannot move. Walay bones nga mutabang sa ato ato move. And... Just like the cytoskeleton, if wala po yung cytoskeleton, the cell won't have its definite shape, okay? And also, another function of the cytoskeleton is that it secures organelles in specific positions. So, katong mga organelles, if imagino na itong wala cytoskeleton, so itong mga organelles, it will float just it will float around the cytoplasm. So, the cytoskeleton will help them stay or hold in place. Okay? But, although the cytoskeleton contributes to the shape of the cell and also to secure the position of organelles, but this network of protein fibers is not entirely nga, rigid or stiff. It is also flexible to allow certain cellular components such as vesicles to move around the cell and also since of that flexibility cellular organisms like unicellular organisms like bacteria could move independently because of the cytoskeleton so the cytoskeleton is made up of three types of molecular fibers we have microfilaments microtubules and intermediate filament. So, I don't have to discuss sa mga specific functions ani sa ano lang differences sa ilang structures aning tuluka molecular fibers. Okay? So, we have here the microtubule, the microfilament, and intermediate filament. So, microtubules, if you look at the structure, so, muragid po siya og, tubo or tube. So, it is found in the centrioles or sa centrosome. Okay? So, the microtubules during cell division, 
it will extend and connect to the chromosomes okay but we will discuss further sa mitosis or cell division na sa succeeding ng mga modules then we also have another type of molecular fibers we have the microfilament and intermediate filament so ang common sa ilang structures sa ilang duha is that pura siya og ganang twisted or pura siya og twisted ng mga threads but the difference between ilang duha is this one mas gamay siya mas thinner that's why it is called microfilament and then this one is much bigger so intermediate filament so next we have also another cell component called the flagella but not all cells have flagella. Only certain types of cells have flagella. So the singular form for flagella is flagellum. Okay? So examples of specific types of cells nga na flagella is the sperm cell. Okay? This is the flagellum. Okay? So single, singular form kung daghan, we will refer to this one as flagella. So, the flagella, ang direction siyang movement is snake-like or undulating. Just like this one. So, you can see sa ito ang GIF or moving picture sa sperm cell. So, function for flagella is to aid in the movement of the cell. So, in order for the sperm cell to propel forward and proceed to the egg cell, so the flagella will wave like this one. Para maka-move ang to ang sperm cell. So next we have another cellular component called cilia. So just like flagella, not all types of cells can i cilia, only specific ones. So cilia is the plural form and the singular form is cilium. So just like flagella, the cilia aids in cellular movement for some unicellular organisms. But for some, lahi ang function sa cilia. So, for example, sa respiratory tract na atay cilia, that cilia will filter the air that we breathe in. Okay? And also, naapod tay cilia sa fallopian tube for female. So, ang purpose sa cilia dito sa fallopian tube is to help the egg cell to move coming from the much deeper depths of the fallopian tube para mas magka dool siya sa sperm cell. Okay? So, ang cilia, if we're going to compare that with the flagella, the cilia is much shorter compared sa flagella. And also, the cilia, lahi ipod ang iyang movement. If ang flagella is snake-like, sa cilia, it's back and forth. Tara, kani Back and forth ang iya ang motion. So, that's it for the pre-recorded lecture of module 1. So if you have any questions, just send me a message request in Facebook or if you are part of the ODL modality, so you can ask your questions during our Google Meet session. So that's it and thank you for listening.